Last time, I explained that if you want to get anywhere with fighting games, learning how to defend yourself is mandatory. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that this is going to be the first practical topic. And in another completely unexpected turn of events, I'm going to make yet another analogy with real-world martial arts. Show up to any martial arts club as a beginner, and the first thing they will teach you is how to put your guard up. My historical European martial arts instructor would say to beginners that the first rule of sword fighting is don't get hit. The second rule being hit your opponent if you're wondering. It seems though that teaching things in that order isn't necessarily a popular perspective because of all the games I have access to at the time of writing, only three have tutorials that teach you how to defend before teaching you how to attack. But simply put, defense is how you stop dying, or at the very least, Stop dying as fast as you otherwise would. A stronger player will still kick your ass, but with good defense, you can at least make sure they don't do it for free, and in time you will find the opportunity to counterattack. A quick side note, at the risk of sounding obvious, taking the right course of action requires the right information, and that's hard to do if you don't know where to look. The vast majority of video games these days either put the thing you need to pay attention to in the dead center of the screen, or let you move it to the center through camera movement. This is harder to do in a genre that is designed for two or more people sharing the same screen. So you end up with characters moving around from one edge of the screen to the other, sometimes switching sides, meaning that the part of the screen you care about most changes throughout the match. And that part, if you hadn't guessed already, is your opponent's character. Again, this may sound obvious, but the brain doesn't exactly work like that. There are studies which show that people who are new to using prosthetic arms will start by fixating on the hand when moving objects with it. And as they gain more experience and confidence, their gaze will start shifting towards their goal instead. Something similar is going to happen to you as you familiarize yourself with your character's control, and you will fixate on your own character. That is normal, but don't forget that at some point you're going to have to start focusing on your opponent because they're the one you need to observe for finding patterns and actions you might be able to react to. Take Tekken, for instance. Even among seasoned fighting game players, it is notorious for being on the more difficult end of the scale when it comes to escaping throws, because what you need to do to escape changes depending on which throw your opponent is using. The thing is, the answer is right there on the screen, but only if you pay attention to your opponent. Not that it's obvious, but it's certainly going to be more difficult than it has to be if you overlook the cues the game gives you. At the same time, because fighting games aren't in first-person perspective, you kinda do have to keep tabs on your own character to gauge the distance between you and your opponent, among other things. My suggestion then would be to focus on the space between the two characters with a bias towards your opponent. This should give you the best chances of figuring out what's going on and acting according to that information, especially when it comes to defending yourself. Speaking of which, Effectively, defense is any action you take to avoid, negate, or reduce damage. And sure, the best defense might very well be offense, but considering how often that plan will fail, it's best to have a solid backup. So let's look at some of the other defensive options first. By the way, I absolutely don't expect you to master all of these by the end of this video. My goal is to gather the knowledge in a small number of places that remain relatively digestible. I urge you not to try to learn and apply all of them at once. Start with the simple stuff and stick with that until it stops working, then add the next thing on top of that, referring back to this video if you have to. Today we'll look at avoiding damage. If you think about it, the best way to not get hurt in a fight is to not get in a fight in the first place. But that's what we signed up for when launching the game, so what's the next best thing? Well, we can apply rule number one of sword fighting, don't get hit. As it happens, in the context of fighting games, this comes with quite a few upsides. If an incoming attack whiffs, meaning it doesn't connect, it can't put you in hit stun, or block stun for that matter. In other words, if you don't get hit, you can't get comboed. And if you don't get hit, you can't get mixed up either, because you don't need to block. Many characters have attacks that are ambiguous or too fast to react to. If you don't know how to deal with them, your best bet might be to just not deal with them by being nowhere near those attacks. Plus, there is something irritating about whiffing an attack due to an opponent's action. 
So being able to do that is a good way to get under your opponent's skin, which is how they'll end up making mistakes and give you a shot at a counter-attack. It all sounds very good, but how does one not get hit? A simple solution is to stay away from your opponent. Fast attacks, the ones you physically cannot react to, are usually counterbalanced by having a shorter range. But if you get into the habit of standing right next to your opponent, you are negating that downside. Maybe for you, but more importantly, for your opponent as well. I should know, I do this way too often, especially as I tend to play characters with a shorter reach. You can easily fix that by just walking back until you're out of range. How far is out of range, you may ask? Well, that's something you'll have to figure out the hard way through experience, as each attack is different. But the rule of thumb is to assume that enemy attacks always reach further than you think. As our immediate goal is to not die, we could make worse mistakes than being too far away from the opponent. If walking back doesn't get you out of range fast enough, many games will let you backdash, usually by tapping the back button twice. As the game suggests, a backdash will move you quite a bit faster than a simple backwards walk, which can be the difference between freedom and block stun. In some games, the first few frames of a backdash might even be invulnerable, and some games will let you dash even while in the air, but that comes at a cost. While walking back tends to automatically turn into a block if the incoming attack does connect, a backdash offers no such protection, and you will get hit if the opponent catches the end of the backdash with their attack. Like many actions you can take in fighting games, you have to weigh the risks versus the potential rewards. In other situations, you get out of the way not by moving backwards, but by moving forwards instead. In Street Fighter, for instance, it is very common to have your opponent jump at you at such an angle that you can't really catch them with an entire attack, and blocking them can be tricky because it might hit you on the side opposite the one you blocked, which is called a cross-up. But if you walk, dash, or run under the airborne character so that you are no longer where they expect you to be by the time they land, Chances are you won't need to worry about getting crossed up. It might take some practice to get the timing right, but it's definitely a tool you don't want to forget is available to you. Also available, either as a universal mechanic or possibly as a character-specific move depending on the game, you may find that you have the ability to dodge forward while being invulnerable to attacks, with the potential added benefit of switching sides with your opponent if you're close enough, which may be valuable if you're stuck in a corner. In some cases, you might even be able to dodge on the spot if you'd rather stand your ground. Speaking of which, if you can't or won't get out of the way for whatever reason, you may still have other options to consider before you have to block. If the incoming attack hits low, you might be able to jump over it. Some games have several types of jumps, but for the purpose of this conversation, they are all functionally the same. It's worth bearing in mind that in nearly every fighting game ever that lets you do so, jumping is relatively risky because the list of things you can do while you're in the air shrinks considerably, and very often, blocking is not one of them. On top of that, remember that jump animations have a startup too, during which you are still on the ground and vulnerable to attacks. But even if jumping over attacks carries a risk, never forget that it is a part of your toolkit because in some situations, it might be what you have to do. For instance, jumping is how you avoid getting thrown into the games. On the other end of that spectrum, if an attack looks like it hits high, it is possible you might be able to duck under it by simply crouching. I've talked before about how in 3D fighters, high attacks and throws will always whiff on crouching opponents, but even in 2D ones, some attacks will have such a high hitbox that you might just be able to duck under them. For instance, in Guilty Gear Strive, since standing punch is so high off the ground, it will whiff on a standing Giovanna, let alone a crouching one. Dealing with Vega's sky-high claw in Street Fighter V became a lot simpler when I realized I could avoid it altogether by just crouching. In 2D Fighters, this is a lot less common than being able to jump over lows, however, but once again, if everything else fails, it might be worth trying. And in 3D Fighters, it is a key component of your defense plan. In fact, avoiding attacks is such a big thing in 3D Fighters that it's more or less the whole point of the third dimension, with things like sidestepping, for instance. This lets you avoid incoming attacks without changing the distance to your opponent, which may be advantageous. Massive Tsug has a very good video on the details of sidestepping and sidewalking in Tekken, if that's your game, a link in the description. You should know, however, that some attacks are designed to catch sidestepping opponents, either with sweeping horizontal moves or because they will track your movement to some extent. So if you want to play it safe, just get out of range instead. 
And finally, in our first example of the best defense is offense, sometimes the best way to avoid getting hit by an attack is to throw an attack of your own. And I don't mean hitting your opponent before they hit you. We are not there yet. What I mean is that, just like crouching does, some moves will change the position and shape of your hurt box in a way that can keep you safe from certain attacks. More often than not, such moves are low to the ground, which will let you duck under some incoming attacks. These moves are said to have the capacity to low-profile those attacks. On the flip side, you might have access to moves that will get you off the ground just enough to avoid low-hitting attacks, but they are much rarer, at least in 2D games, which is why you might not hear the term high-profile very often. The keen-eared among you will have noticed that I talk about moves more than attacks, because some of those moves don't even deal damage, as their sole purpose is to give you additional movement options. Moves like these are what certain characters need to use to get past projectile spam, for instance. On that topic, while it is somewhat obvious that you can negate enemy projectiles with your own, you should know that characters who can't throw projectiles might have a move that will negate or be invulnerable to them. Famously, Zangief's green hand in earlier versions of Street Fighter. If your game has a good command list, it will point this out to you. Otherwise, you might have to experiment. Because I know you won't be able to resist throwing punches and kicks at your opponent, let's finish by looking at a way to do it that helps with the whole not dying thing. Another effective way to not get hit is to dissuade your opponent from attacking you in the first place. As you might expect, you do this by threatening your opponent with violence. By making an attack, you are placing a hitbox in front of you, even if it is for a single frame, making that area somewhere your opponent does not want to move into. This is called poking. It hits, well, it's a hit. And depending on the situation, you might even convert it into a combo. But the main goal of poking is to deny your opponent access to certain spaces and therefore the ability to hit you with certain attacks. If you're going to press buttons for no apparent reason, it might as well be a good poke. But by nature, it is a risky move as since it's likely to whiff, you are leaving yourself vulnerable during the attack's recovery period, especially if you're mashing that button in a predictable fashion. That also means that not all attacks are good pokes. The most important feature of a poke is that it is relatively safe, meaning that you will recover before your opponent can land a counter-attack. Moves with long range and or fast recovery are usually good candidates for poking. More often than not, these will be found in the character's normals, the attacks that only require a single button press. If the game has a light-medium-heavy attack split, standing and crouching mediums are worth trying first as pokes. So that's it for today. No single game has all the mechanics I've mentioned in this video, but I put together those that you are most likely to encounter and which behave roughly the same way in all games that do feature them. Don't forget that your game of choice might have unique movement options I did not list here, so do check those out as well when you get a chance. I also want to reiterate, look at these techniques one at a time, starting from the simplest. As an exercise, I'd like you to try a few things. Go in training mode and just check out your character's normals, as well as all the moves in your command list. If motion inputs are still too hard for you, focus on the moves that you can do consistently. Out of those moves, pay attention to the animation and identify the ones that feel like they might be good pokes, as well as those that might be used defensively in the ways we've discussed earlier. Out of those moves, learn the three or four simplest ones. With that arsenal, go play online against people who are definitely stronger than you and instead of trying to win, focus on using your pokes and defensive options to make the round last as long as possible. If online still feels too daunting, try that on a harder CPU than you'd normally play and let them try to attack you. By the way, this was the actual goal I set for myself when I started playing Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Next time, we'll look at what your defensive options are when dodging incoming attacks is no longer possible. See you then! Thank you.